When I was little, I used to have this dream where I dreamed about coming upon a treasure trove of diamonds and gleaming gold and glittering stars, this huge treasure trove of extraordinary riches. And tonight is just like that for me. It's my dream come true because we have here um, among our amazing guests and panelists a real treasure. Um, we're going to have a special guest, John Paul Caponegro. He's someone I could listen to every day. He's not only an art star who creates internationally exhibited photographs, but he's also one of those really rare people who knows how to teach and inspire other people to go out and make great art too. So we're really honored to have author, instructor, and fine art photographer John Paul Caponegro with us again tonight on the Photoshop Show. And then we also have in our panel um, a whole bunch of people who also should be right up there in the special guest slot. And I wish we could have them all up there together. Um, but each of these people is an amazing uh, expert in their own right. Over to my left, uh, that's me. You can see me down there with the screen behind me in my brand new office. Isn't it nice? Um, over to my left is Alan Shapiro. Shapiro. <laughs> I do it every time, don't I, Alan? <laughs> And Alan is, uh, and if you watch G+, you know Alan. He's a wonderful photographer. He is um, also a great designer. And he's going to tell us about the new initiative that he has going with his friend Max on G+. My friend Max? You mean Max? You mean Mike? Max? Mike. Mike, whatever. <laughs> Mike, yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm confused now. Okay, so, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow at 3 Eastern and uh, 8, UK time, we are kicking off a pretty significant project that we're proud of. We're calling it the uh, Another Day, Another 600 Seconds. And that's all I'm going to tell you right now, but please tune in tomorrow because it's sort of a humanitarian photographic uh, project and adventure that we'd like everyone to participate in. And who is the other guy? I'm sorry, I got his name wrong. Mike, Mike, Mike Shaw is my brother from another mother. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so how do we find out about this new exciting yeah, uh, secret thing? How do you find out about it? There's going to be a how hangout on there's going to be a hangout on air tomorrow. Tomorrow 3 o'clock Eastern New York time and 8 o'clock London time. Do we go to your stream, Alan? Yes, yes, you go to my stream. My we'll stream, Mike's there. stream. With bells on. Yes, yeah. and it will be on YouTube and it's going to be syndicated everywhere. So. Cool. Well, we'll I'll be there. At least I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. And thanks for coming tonight. And then over on my right is our special guest, John Paul Caponegro. Can you tell us a little about what you do, John Paul, and where we can find you online? John, you're going to have to unmute yourself because I muted you. Sorry. <laughs> we're better now? Yeah, we're fine. If you can spell my name, you can find way too much about me on my uh, website. It's got uh, all kinds of learning resources, workshops, books, and uh, my blog, of course. Uh, I'm primarily a fine artist, but I run a lot of workshops around the world in exciting places like Iceland and Greenland this fall. I've um, been at this since I was a kid and uh, can't imagine not doing it. It's been a long, interesting ride with Photoshop since it was first introduced. Well, I hope you'll tell us more about what you're doing, what your current projects are when you um, present in just a little while. So we'll be back with you soon. And next up, in front of that green thing. <laughs> We have Mr. Ricardo Lagos, who does two cool things. He gets to take pictures, and he gets to work at Google. How cool is that? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ricardo Lagos, and you can find my photography at Google+. Plus. And yes, I am coming to you guys from the Google offices. So this is our green room. Actually, not really. It's just a little booth. Um, so I'm a Photoshop amateur, so I'm really looking forward to uh, picking up all sorts of new tricks today. I'm so glad you came. It's cool. And Robin, tell us about you. Robin Griggs Wood is over there next to Ricardo, and she is not only a photographer, but an artist as well. Oh, thank you, Dan. That was great. Yeah, I, I'm a traditional artist. Really? <laughs> what was that thing you just waved at us? No, was it was, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I shouldn't wave it. T, I do mm -hmm. children's book illustration. Is that easy to see? Yeah. Anyway. Um, but since I got on G+, I've really been, I've, I've been a photographer for a long time. I've worked in Photoshop for a long time. But since I got on G+, it, it, it seems like such a creative outlet for me right now. And 
I've just been expanding that area for myself. I'm also mentoring. Uh, Ron Clifford and I and Tamara Prusner have taken over the G Plus Mentorship for Photographers program. And uh, we're looking for mentors or add the page if you want to be mentored. We're putting a ton of energy into it right now and we really want to get a lot of, a lot of people on board and uh, really grow the program. A lot of, a lot of pay it forward stuff there. And if what are the qualifications in your life? Then you can what, pay it forward there. What are the qualifications for being a mentor? You have to want to give your knowledge away. <laughs> <laughs> Caring about people helps too. Okay. Yes, it does. What we what we hope to do is to be able to get people engaged in mentoring who offer different skill levels and different skill sets. So you don't have to be someone who's been a photographer for 30 years to be able to share your knowledge if you want to work with something a little more um, at the beginner level or intermediate level, then we welcome that as well. Can I add something really quick? Sure. If you're learning photography, you can mentor. It is the best way to learn because you just pass on the data that you just got and you're excited about. So anyway, sorry, your turn, Ron. It's okay. <laughs> Ron, what about you? What are you working on? Well, I'm obviously working on the mentorship program and um, that's, uh, I just started a program this week so that's consuming a lot of time. The first week in a little bit is always really busy getting uh, getting the reins in and getting everybody on track with their, their initial projects. And I find that really exciting and rewarding. I, I know um, Sean and John Paul and you, um, and well, we all teach here. We, we all do something within teaching, so you all understand the heart of a teacher and it's what you have to be involved in. Um, I'm also a photographer. I've been taking pictures um, between full-time and part-time for in the area of 30 years, um, but I've been taking it very seriously in the last couple of years. And we have one more person down there who, you know, absolutely, you know, he's, he's the star of the show in his own right, and that is Mr. Sean Duggan. Sean, tell us what you're doing these days. Thank you, Jan. Uh, well, the, the big thing that's happening right now is, well, I got a couple big things, uh, working on finishing up the latest version of Photoshop masking and compositing, which I'm writing along with Katrine Eisman and James Porto, who's a commercial photographer in New York who's done compositing for many, many years. So uh, I just finished my last uh, chapter over the weekend, and now we're just kind of doing, you know, PDF layout, proof reviews, revisions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, it's nearing completion finally, and it's been a really big big project, so I'm really jazzed that that's going to be uh, wrapped up soon. That'll be due out in September is when it's supposed to hit the bookstores. And then the other thing that I'm really psyched about is I'm going to Iceland in about a week and a half, so I'm totally jazzed about that because I've been wanting to go for a while. And uh, I'm teaching a workshop there in August, uh, August 12th through 18th, with Focus on Nature. And uh, we're still hoping that that's going to run. We will run it with uh, a small amount of people. So if you're interested in uh, a near custom private uh, workshop in Iceland, uh, look me up. Um, but I'm actually going ahead of time uh, kind of on my own to work on my own personal project. And I'm going to be hanging out with uh, Julianne Cost in her workshop, which is called, uh, fittingly enough, Pursuing Your Personal Project in Iceland. So I'm going to be working on... Uh, a couple of personal projects of mine, and I'm going to be taking some new gear. I'm really jazzed uh, about taking some new gear that I'm getting from borrowlenses.com, and so um, I'm really looking forward to getting out of the country and having 10 days to just be a photo geek in some beautiful places. No, Ron, <laughs> it's up to you. Save the day. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Here I am. I just had it on mute because I was checking the theme. Yeah, that's awesome. I'd love to see ice or uh, Iceland one day. That sounds like an incredible trip. Well, I've got some um, some photographs that I've had in mind for a couple of years now, and so it's it's good to finally be able to uh, have the time to go and and pursue them. So, and I'm also going to be yeah. posting um, uh, some videos, tutorial videos, uh, and tip videos on photography in general, and also Lightroom and Photoshop from Iceland when I'm there. So, I'll have more information about that, but there'll be some uh, some promotions involved with that. Oh, fantastic! Sean, is this the first time you've been or are going? Yes, this is the first time. Yeah, you'll love it. 
yeah, I'm gonna have a, a full 10, 12 days there. Um, well, I guess about 10 days. Um, and it, it's nice that I'm that I'm taking the time to go uh, in advance of the workshop that I'm scheduled to teach because that way I can actually you know concentrate on doing my own work without having to worry about you know being responsible for leading. Uh, a workshop, so I yeah, think it's, it's terrific. Work. You'll find Anna and Ragi are just terrific folks. Yeah, I'm really. It'll also help you understand where you need to go better as well. Just make yeah. sure you're waterproof, because yeah. when the rain comes, it comes. <laughs> I've got I've got rain sleeves for the cameras. You need them. Yeah, yeah I got them <laughs> on some days. <laughs> I know that it was Jan's intention to show a, a short tutorial, and when she is able to pop back in, I know they're facing some forest fires in her area and that may be what has happened. There may have been an, uh, a cut in her, her power or her mm. reception or she may have to leave. So uh, that being the case, we're going to carry on. I know, John Paul, you have um, incorporated Photoshop into your artistic vision for some time now, um, for a very long time. Hey, oh, Jan's back. Yeah. Hi, Jan. Hi, sorry about I'm, that. I'm glad you're there. I was just about to get John Paul to talk a little bit about what he's going to dem or talk to us about. But since you're here, do you want to um, work on the, are you ready to work on the um, sure, today's I'll quick demo? I'm going to screen share. You know, um, I have to apologize, but we, I live in Boulder, Colorado, and I'm part of a state that is basically on fire. It's really scary. Um, and the fire had came to Boulder today. So there is a large part of the state on fire, and it's, have, it's wreaking havoc with everything, um, including apparently with the electricity. My computer just went off. It wasn't just Google Plus. So you may lose me. If you do, I trust that Ron will carry on without me until I can get back on. Well, I'll um, do that for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk tonight about something that I think I can do relatively quickly since we have such an interesting show, and that is to remind or to show you who already know um, that you can open JPEGs, not just RAW files, into Adobe Camera Raw for easy processing there. I think that's something that we often overlook when we're working with JPEGs. But let's say, for example, that you do a lot of shooting with your iPhone, so you just have a lot of JPEGs. Um, for example, the shots that you see here were all taken with my iPhone. Um, and, or let's say that you are shooting a sporting event, maybe one of your kids' events, and you just want to shoot JPEGs so you can do some quick shots. Well, in that case, one of the easiest ways to process your photos is to bring them into Adobe Camera Raw. The advantage of doing that is that Adobe Camera Raw has these really intuitive sliders and other controls that you may find easier to use for basic photo corrections than those special Photoshop techniques and handshakes that you have to watch shows like this to pick up. <laughs> so um, I wanted to show you how you can open files into the Adobe Camera Raw interface in Photoshop. And does anybody there know off the top of their heads, is there a command in Photoshop that helps you to do that? Anybody know one? This is like stump the experts uh, question. Uh, I don't usually work in JPEGs, so is no. that what you're referring to specifically? Well, it's okay if you don't know, because most people don't have an answer. And the reason is that, to my knowledge, there isn't a command in Photoshop itself that allows you to open JPEGs up into um, Adobe Camera Raw, which is the, a Photoshop plugin. So the answer is you have to use another program, which is Adobe Bridge. And if you have installed Photoshop, you have Bridge installed on your system. And you can either use the entire big program bridge, which you see here, or in Photoshop, you can use the little mini bridge that in Photoshop 6 appears down at the bottom of Photoshop down here. From either one of these areas, you can open a photo directly into Adobe Camera Raw rather than into Photoshop proper. So for example, here I am in um, the mini bridge. I'm going to scroll over. I have a folder full of JPEGs down here from my iPhone. Here's one I took in the uh, Orsay Museum in Paris. So if I want to open this JPEG, I just select it in mini bridge. Uh, let's try it with a different computer. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, but hopefully it will. That was quick. All right, let's see. My mother always told me to bring an extra. <laughs> so uh, here we are. Can you see my screen? Yeah. We can. You see, uh, you see Photoshop there with the mini bridge at the bottom? Mm, we see bridge. OK, there we go. Whoop, there we go. All right, so one more time we'll try this. And if it doesn't work, we'll just go right on from here. 
So here I am in uh, Adobe Photoshop, and in MiniBridge, I'm going to come down and try to open that photo of the Orsay Museum. I'll select it, and if I were to double click on this photo, it would open into Photoshop proper. Instead, I'm going to hold down the control key on a Mac, or right click on a PC, and click on that photo, and that brings up this contextual menu from which I can choose Open with Camera Raw. And in just a minute, it will open that photo into the Adobe Camera Raw interface. And the beauty of working here in Camera Raw with a photo like this is that you can very quickly do a basic exposure fix. So for example, if I wanted to uh, make the highlights, have the, have the highlights have more detail, I might drag the highlights slider, slider over to the left here. If I want to open up the shadows for more detail, I'll drag shadows over to the right. If I want to sharpen up the midtones, I'll drag clarity to the right. And I might add a touch of vibrance for more color intensity. And then I can even change, uh, if there's a color cast in the image, even though it's a JPEG, I can fix that relatively quickly here in Adobe Camera Raw by just moving the temperature slider. So if I want this image to be more, uh, say, more warm, I can move that over to the right. And I can accomplish all that really easily just using the basic sliders. And for the most part, I'll start at the top and just go down through the sliders, and I'm done. And the whole thing just takes a couple of seconds. And beyond this, I have access to all the wonderful features inside of Adobe Camera Raw, like the tone curve, like the sharpening and noise reduction features. I can make this a grayscale image. I can adjust the saturation, hue, or luminance of individual colors. And I could come up to the toolbar and work with the adjustment brush to do those kinds of basic corrections on just part of this photo. And I'm not going to go through all that tonight because it's similar to what you're probably used to doing anyway on raw photos here in Camera Raw, or if you're a Lightroom user, the same sliders are there in Lightroom. So when I'm all done making my quick corrections to this JPEG in Camera Raw, I'll just click Done. And then when I go back and look at the image here in MiniBridge, or if I would look at it in Bridge, it's going to uh, show the image with my corrections. And the real beauty of this is that this is all editable. So from now on, if I double click that JPEG thumb thumbnail down in MiniBridge or in Bridge proper, where, was, where do you think it's going to open? Into Photoshop? No, it's going to open into Camera Raw, where I can make any other changes that I want. So I'll click Done. Now, that, so that is how you can quickly open a file that's a JPEG into Adobe Camera Raw to make basic exposure corrections. Now, if your copy, uh, or if your copy of Photoshop or Bridge isn't working the way I just showed you, it's because you don't have the Camera Raw preferences set the right way. So let me show you where those are. If I go back over to Bridge proper, and I look where the preferences usually are. On a Mac, that's under the name Adobe Bridge. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. Notice that here are Camera Raw preferences, separate from the Bridge preferences. And if I go into the Camera Raw preferences, notice that by default, this setting, this menu is set to automatically open JPEGs with settings. And that means that once I've brought a JPEG into Camera Raw, as I showed you how to do by right or control clicking and then choosing opening Camera Raw from the contextual menu, the next time I try to open that file, by just double clicking it, it will automatically open into Camera Raw. That's what that kind of esoteric language means. And one more thing, if you shoot only JPEGs and you always want to deal with them first in Camera Raw, you could change this menu to automatically open all supported JPEGs. And then, the very first time you double click a JPEG in MiniBridge or in Bridge, it's going to open into Adobe Camera Raw. You can drag the sliders like I showed you. And then you could bring it into Photoshop for more work or just be done with it. But I'm going to leave mine set to the default of automatically open JPEGs that already have settings and click OK. And so that is what I had to show you tonight. So yeah. I yes. Can you drag from MiniBridge, like just drag, drag a photo onto the um, Photoshop canvas? I, I, I can. dabbled with MiniBridge, but it, it kind of got in my way, so I stopped using it. But I saw, you know, I think one of your tips uh, maybe two weeks ago, and I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll give MiniBridge a try, but I hadn't thought about the idea of just being able to drag from MiniBridge directly into yeah, and you well, just like see that, grab but that's going to be different. You certainly can do that. But what's okay. going to happen in that is the photo will open into Photoshop and not into yep. Camera Raw. So if I Understood. take this JPEG drag it up here, in just a moment it will be open in Photoshop. And then I would be 
uh, I still could adjust it, but I would have to use things like adjustment uh, layers and masks and the normal Photoshop working method, rather than go into camera and just drag the sliders in, which is a lot easier for a lot of people. Yeah. Jan, I've got a quick Any question. When it saves those settings or those adjustments to that JPEG, is it saving that out as a new JPEG? In other words, is there another compression routine going on, or is it bypassing that entirely? That's a great question. If you take a look at that image that I corrected of the Orsay Museum, which is down here in Mini Bridge, you'll see that there is a little icon that's a circle with two triangles. And that just means that those settings that I chose in Adobe Camera Raw are being saved as um, instructions about how I want the photo to be displayed. They are not recompressing the photo, to my knowledge. If I wanted to recompress the photo, I could. So for example, let's open it again in Camera Raw by just double clicking it. And in just a second, I'll open it in Camera Raw. And as you know, John Paul, I then could save a copy of this image with these settings for export. So let's say, for example, that I need a copy for my website, then I can come down here and click Save Image, and that gives me a whole dialog box where I could choose to save in the JPEG format, I could fi uh, fiddle with the quality and the file name, or I could save out in these other formats, TIFF format, Photoshop format, or the DMG, digital negative law file format. And in that case, if I chose JPEG, I believe there would be another compression of the file. Terrific. So essentially what you just showed us is the superior way of editing JPEG files because it avoids that JPEG compression. And second, you can go back in and change those settings at any time you want, almost like you have an Uber adjustment layer that has features that even the adjustment layer panel doesn't, like white balance. Exactly. Great way to put it. I think of this as my master file, whether it's a raw file or a JPEG. And then all the copies that I'm going to make to output come off of this master file. But this master file isn't getting all compressed and messed up. And by the way, one more thing. If I decided that I didn't want to have these settings on this image, I wanted to go back to ground zero, in Bridge or Mini Bridge, I can control or right click. And I'm sorry, I have to do this in Bridge proper. So let me get back to Bridge proper. So I can find that image here in Bridge. Here it is. And I can control or right click in Bridge and go down to Develop Settings and just clear all my settings. And that will just wipe off all those settings that I just added in Adobe Camera Raw. And in just a moment, that image will look the way it did when we started. And notice the little settings icon is gone. So, OK, so you guys, I so have, that's how you I have one thing to add to that um, about processing JPEGs in Camera Raw. Actually, a couple of things. W one thing is probably only of interest to instructors, but, but uh, it, it is an interesting little bugaboo that happens sometimes. Um, I have been in teaching situations where the classroom that I've been in has been set up to uh, open all JPEGs through Camera Raw. And that works out great, except uh, for a couple of situations, I had actually created a path and saved it into the JPEG file. And I'd saved it as a JPEG file just you know, to keep it small and have it transfer over the network fast. But when you open a JPEG file through Camera Raw that has a path in it, the path doesn't make the journey into Photoshop. It gets left yeah. behind. Yeah. Oh, I That's good to That's know. So, like I said, it's a geeky instructor thing. But if there's any instructors out there who have to teach uh, Photoshop, uh, that's uh, one good thing you might want to know about. Yeah. That's and then the other thing that I would just sort of share uh, with people is just make, make sure that people realize that just because they can process a JPEG in camera raw, it doesn't mean it's the same as actually shooting an actual raw file in terms of the quality of the tonal information that you get. Absolutely true. And one example of that is if you were to look under the white balance preset menu here, uh, when you have a JPEG open in camera raw, you don't see all of the presets that you get with a raw file. Um, and I believe, and maybe you guys, if you know more scientific detail about this, if you correct me, that it has to do with the fact that you know, you're know you not dealing with a raw file that really lets you adjust the white balance to be anything you want. You're dealing with a JPEG that already has white balance baked into it from your camera. Um, and there are other settings that your camera bakes into a JPEG. Um, so it's already a processed file when you're starting with it, even if you're working with it here in camera raw. OK, anything else? If not, let's get back. I'm going to de-share my screen. And I would love 
to turn the, uh, the show over to John Paul so that he can wow us with what he has to show us tonight.